Hey again, it's me, Mr. Weiser, going over some more EOC review. This is still from EOC review number one. Once again, this di this document is linked in the video description. This will be covering parts three and four, geometry stuff, volume, density, cross sections, and rotations. If you'd like to take a look at some of the standards that are addressed from the curriculum, you can pause this vi uh, the video now and read the screen. The first part of this video is going to be going over area, volume, density. I want to review some formulas, and I'm going to rewrite these formulas in a little bit more friendly version with uh, pictures for each one. All right, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. You're not going to be given formulas on this test. So you're going to want to write these down, memorize them, do some flashcards, do something to help you know these if you haven't learned them yet. Um, all of these formulas, you're expected to know, and you'll likely see the majority of them on a variety of problems. Um, so I'm not going to walk you through all of these uh, because that would be a lot of reading and it would take a long time on this video. So if you need to write these down, pause the video, and then you can move on to the questions. Let's get going. Our first question is dealing with a sphere in a cube. Classic question. Question says a sphere is inscribed in a cube. If the volume of the cube is 64 cubic centimeters, what is the volume of the space inside the cube not taken up by the sphere? Keyword not taken up. This is question, uh, question number one on part three. The first thing we want to know is if I want to know the volume of the sphere so I can take it away from the volume of the cube, that'll answer this question. Since it says the volume not taken up by the sphere, I want to know all this empty space here. And so what I want to do is I want to do the volume of the cube. I want to subtract the volume of the sphere. Now, I know the volume of the cube. The volume of the cube is given to us. That volume of the cube is 64. So it's going to be 64 minus whatever the volume of the sphere is. We'll figure that out by using this 64. Uh, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is we want to look up the volume of a cube formula. And that is going to be side cubed, side cubed. So we'll plug in 64 in for the V. And then we can figure out what the side is, you know, for a couple uh, a couple different ways. But um, one way is we can take the cube root. Uh, so if you don't know where the cube root is, get out your calculator or go to Desmos. I'll show you both ways. OK, for uh, Desmos, you can actually do um, cube root CBRT. And you can put in 64. Or you could go N-T-H-R-O-O-T, and then manually type in the 364. N-T-H-R-O-O-T or C-B-R-T to get that. On these calculators, you can go to math, option four, and plug in 64 that way. Or what I like to do is just take 64 and raise it to the one third power. And that works on both this calculator and on Desmos, 64 to the one third power will give you four. In either case, four is going to be the length of one side. Meaning that four times four times four is 64, or four to the third power is 64. So that checks off of our side length. Now, why do we do that? Well, we get our side length so we can figure out what the radius of the sphere is. And the radius of the sphere is going to be half that side length. So if I go into the sphere, you'll notice that that's the center, right? That's going to go halfway. So four divided by two, is going to give you two. And so I know my radius now is two. And I can figure out the volume of the sphere because the volume of a sphere formula is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. And again, once again, that formula might not be given to you on the EOC. So you have to know that. So let's go ahead and plug in two for our radius, 4 thirds pi times two to the third power. Let's throw that in your calculator. You try that first. When I plug in 4 thirds pi and I plug the 2 in for the radius, I get about 33.51. Now, if you're not sure how to get the 4 thirds, just do 4 divided by 3. And I do the right arrow. I type pi for pi, parentheses 2, shift 6, raise it to the third power. And I get about 33.5. You can also do that in a standard calculator as well. So my volume is going to be 33.5. And that's going to be cubic centimeters. And so now I can plug that in here. And I can figure out my um, area, the volume not taken up by the sphere. So it's going to be 64 minus 
And that's going to give us what? About 30.5 cubic centimeters. Let's go on to the next question. This question, part three, number two, suppose we want to take an open box top out of a piece of cardboard that is 12 inches um, by 20 inches. We'll do this by cutting out equal size squares from each corner of the side length X. What is the length of X that could give the maximum volume of the box? There's a lot to unpack here. This question is going to be using graphing technology to assist. First thing I want to do is when I take these corners out of the box, I'm actually subtracting two squares from each side. So that length right here is going to be 20 minus 2x. And this length down here is going to be 12 minus 2x. So when I'm making up my volume, um, the long side is going to be 20 minus 2x. The short side is going to be 12 minus 2x. And then notice that I folded it up so I have some height. Well, that height is actually going to be x. So the volume of any box is going to be length times width times height. And we can actually make a function out of that. So our length would be 20 minus 2x. Use parentheses, please. Our width would be 12 minus 2x. And our height would just be x. Now, you are not going to do this by hand because that would involve some more advanced math. What you'll do is you'll use Desmos to help get a volume function. You can graph it and you can find what the maximum volume is based on that. So we're going to go ahead and graph this in Desmos. Pause the video and see if you can uh, throw that in Desmos. Don't worry about the V. Just put this part in here and uh, see what you get. When you key this in, you're going to get a function that looks kind of weird at first. But what you want to realize is that we're only dealing with the numbers between this 0 and this 0. So. I want to know where the maximum is. I'm going to have to go all the way up here. And as you can see, it's going to be a, a ways here. And you can zoom out if you want. But I'm looking for that point. And this question wants to know specifically, what is the length of x that would give the maximum volume of the box? Well, x in this case is that. All right, This is going to be the volume that is the maximum volume. This is the answer to the question. Um, X is going to be 2.427, in this case, inches, uh, to give you the maximum volume. So the answer is about 2.427. Let's go on to the next question. Part three, number three, uh, gold has a density of 19.32 grams per cubic centimeter. A block of gold weighs 463.68 grams and has a length of four centimeters and a height of three centimeters. What is the width of the gold block? Well, this question gives you density. And so now we got to figure out what formula we're going to use to use the density formula in, in accompaniment with the mass and the volume of the box. So this is density. I'll call that capital D. It says a block of gold weighs, that'll be your mass, so 463.68 grams, and it has a length of 4 and a height of 3. And we want to know the width. So length times width times height is your volume, right? This is just a rectangular prism. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the density formula, DMV. Density is mass divided by volume. And we're going to substitute in the things that we have. So since I have 19.32 and I have 463.68, I do not have the volume of this block. So I'm going to solve for the volume. We'll want to do that by dividing this 463 by the 19.32, since we have to multiply the V up here and then bring this down below. Okay. Um, using your calculator, you're going to get a volume of exactly 24, centi uh, 24 cubic centimeters. Now, our volume is 24 cubic centimeters, so we'll go ahead and substitute the length in the height in. So our length is going to be 4. Our height is going to be 3. Our volume is 24. All we need to figure out is what's the width. And so we can multiply the 4 and the 3, and that'll give us 12 times the width is 24. And solving that for the width is going to give you 2, because you got to divide 24 by 12. And that's going to give you 2 inches, or centimeters, excuse me. So the width of that block will be 2 centimeters. 
All right, the next section is going to go over cross sections, dense, uh, cross sections and rotations. So let's uh, dig right into it. All right, we're going to go over some common um, cross sections. A cross section is just the 2D shape. So if you take a rectangular prism and you go parallel to the base, um, you're going to get a rectangle. A perpendicular straight up and down will also yield a rectangle for a rectangular prism. Here are the other ones. A cube is just like a rectangular prism, but the shapes are going to be uh, squares instead of rectangles. Depending on how you slice a cylinder, you can get a circle or a rectangle. With a cone, you might get a circle if you go parallel or a triangle if you go perpendicular. You could also get a parabola or hyperbola, but you don't really see those in this uh, this course, so don't worry about too much about those right now. No matter how you slice a sphere, you're going to get a circle out of that one. And then with a square pyramid, you might get a, a square if you go parallel or a triangle if you go in the center, trapezoid if you go somewhere off the center if you go straight up and down. So those are some of the more common ones. There's obviously very, uh, way more than just those, but those are the, the most likely ones you'll see if you come across them. Now, when you spin things around 360 degrees, you can take two-dimensional shapes and form three-dimensional objects as well. They're all going to have circular bases as a result. A rectangle could turn into a cylinder. A triangle could turn into a cone, and a circle could turn into a sphere. All are going to have a radius centered around whatever that uh, rotation was going to be. So a uh, circle could turn into a sphere, and they'll all have a radius uh, centered around that rotation. Let's do a couple questions uh, relating to that. All right, part four, question number one. We're going to take a rectangle ABCT, ABCD and rotate it about line L. If the area of the rectangle is 60 uh, centimeters squared and the uh, length of DC is five centimeters, what's the volume of the 3D solid formed by rotating the rectangle 360 degrees about line L? Here's line L down here. We're going to rotate that 360 degrees. So we are going to first rotate that around and form ourselves a cylinder because both of those will make a circle. And so that radius is going to be that five centimeters that you see there. Um, and then we don't know the height of that cylinder, but if you turn that cylinder uh, on its side, you know, you can, you can kind of see the height a little bit better. The height is going to be whatever that length is. If that radius is five, and I know that this area right here is 60, then I can calculate the height by just taking 60 divided by five, since the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the uh, the radius in this case would be you know um, either the length or the width. I'll just call that five, and the width would just be the height. So if I divide that by five, I'm going to get twelve. So I know my height's going to be twelve, and now I have a cylinder with a height of twelve and a radius of five. I can plug those into my volume formula for a cylinder. Got to know that formula pi r squared. Area of the circle, pi r squared, multiplied by the height. Plug in your volume, uh, plug in your radius and your height. See if you can get a volume. Pause the video if you need to. All right, let's plug that in. Pi r squared. Uh, on this calculator, if I do second that button, I'll get pi. Um, 5x squared button multiplied by 12. And I'm going to get 942.47, so I'll round that up to 0.5. Nine forty two point five cubic centimeters. Remember, volume is cubic units. Go on to the next question. One more question in this video. The question is number two, part four. The cylinder shown has a volume of 500 cubic centimeters and a height of 15 centimeters. What is the area and circumference of the cross section shown? Well, that cross section is a circle. So you should know the area of a circle is pi r squared, and the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, two things that you're expected to know on this exam. Um, so we have to figure out what the radius is to be able to get the area and the circumference. Fortunately, we're given the volume and the height, so we can calculate that. Plugging in 500 for V and 15 for H, you're going to get um, 500 equals pi r squared times 15. We can solve that for pi r squared by dividing by 15 on both sides. Using your calculator, um, you're going to get 500 divided by 15 to be approximately um, 33.33 repeating, so you can round that to a couple decimal places if you'd like to. So that's going to equal pi r squared. 
Now that's actually your area. So we actually know the area. The area is pi r squared. So I'm just going to say 33.33, um, and that's going to be centimeters squared since it's area. Now you can go ahead and solve that for the radius, but then you'd have to replug it in here anyway. So I'll leave it there. But to get the circumference, I'm going to need to finish solving for that for the radius. So since 33.33 is pi r squared, let's go ahead and write that out. You're going to want to divide both sides by pi. And you get about 10.61. Next, you're going to want to square root that 10.61. So the square root of that answer is about 3.257. We'll plug that right into the circumference formula. And, formula, and uh, 2 times pi times that number will give you your circumference. And it looks like we get about 20.4665. Um, and you may have different numbers depending on how you round it. But as long as you're in the ballpark and you're close, you'll be all right. So I'll say 20.47 or we'll just say about 20.5 and round that up. Circumference would be about 20.5 centimeters. Remember, volume is cubic units. Area is square units. And a circumference, radius, uh, diameter, all those lengths would be just units, so centimeters in that case. That concludes this video, uh, parts three and four. The, the next video and the last video of this review um, will be covering equations of circles in the coordinate plane. Stay tuned.